I bring in all the wishes and greetings on behalf of all the faculty members of Speed Medical Institute to Dr. Anushka Agarwal for scoring rank number three in MCH ENT group for MCH Adrenic Oncology. Congratulations. Thank you so much, sir. Great, doctor. Can we know a detailed background of yours from where you started uh, your career till date? What all you have done? Okay, so I actually belong to Jaipur and I did my uh, MBBS from SMS Medical College, Jaipur. After which I shifted to Mumbai for my MS in ENT from KM Hospital and say GS Medical College. So I just finished uh, my MS in 2021. And right after that, I had an opportunity to appear for an interview for a fellowship at uh, Tata Memorial Hospital. So I got into that and uh, I've been a Succedia Fellowship and uh, I've been a Succedia Fellow in Head and Econco and Tata Memorial Hospital since then. And uh, I appeared for uh, the NEET last year as well. Uh, that time my rank was 31. And uh, this year I scored 3. So... I'll be coming back, I think, to Tata Memorial as an MCH candidate. Correct. So your fellowship is over, doctor? Sir, it's mm -hmm. a fellowship in uh, head and neck oncology. So we work with the head and neck department only, um, like other MCH candidates. It's just a fellowship uh, and uh, now I will get an MCH. Thing. It's two years program. Huh? A fellowship is a two years program, correct? So no, this this fellowship is not a two years program. It's a six monthly okay. uh, fellowship that you can uh, renew uh, every six months. Okay. So I've been around for one and a half years here. And uh, now I'm finishing this month and I'll join us. So you are in Tata, Tata only right now? Yeah, I'm in Tata. Yes. So I think now you have converted your position there. <laughs> yeah, it's just another day at work. Just a little different. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Only the cap is different. <laughs> Yeah, only the cap is different. Yes, you can say that. <laughs> very nice and uh, very smart. And uh, being inside the department, just you worked towards it and just you wanted to, I mean, had that fantastic, fabulous. Uh, yeah. I mean, can you tell us how do you do that? Actually, I when I finished my MS, I uh, sort of did not have any exposure, I could say, because a lot of my problems, a lot of my uh, MS went into COVID. Uh, so my surgical exposure was greatly reduced during my MS. So I did not have much exposure to head neck. So I really did not know much about head neck. But Tata was just across the street for us. And uh, head neck uh, on has always uh, surprised me and it's always intrigued me. So that's how I used to go to Tata for uh, opinions on cases because it was right across the road. So... We would go there, speak to the consultants there, get opinions on our cases. That's how we used to learn. And uh, I really wanted to do head neck on court to get a better idea to be able to practice ENT. I think right at, uh, right at the end of my MS, I really did not know whether I want to do head neck for the rest of my life. And that is something that I think all ENT PGs feel. Everybody feels like ENT is an end branch and nobody thinks of uh, doing MCH right at uh, the end of their MS. Correct. So, uh, and ENT is quite a versatile branch contrary to what people generally think. And head neck onco, I think, is a, it's a big branch that uh, people are not so exposed during their MS. And uh, a lot of onco centers are, uh, I mean, ENT PGs do not have onco uh, centers in their hospitals. So, they really don't know how to approach oncology cases as much. So I think I was really lucky in that way that uh, I could just go to Tata and then I was lucky enough to get my fellowship as well. And during that time, I think I warmed up to the branch per se and I realized that I should, I think, give an, give an, give, give an attempt at least to do MCH if I'm already spending so much time here. So really nice. that's how I <laughs> decided to give a uh, try. So last year, I think it was a little uh, half-hearted attempt. I did not take much time off last year. It was just five days off. And uh, when I got this rank of 31, that's when I realized that I should have given it more effort. I think this requires more effort. So this year I took some time off and my uh, my mentors and my teachers here and my colleagues were very gracious to cover for me for uh, <laughs> uh, yeah this time that I took off for this exam. And everybody was very supportive and I can't thank them enough. 
so how how did you prepare I man how much time was dedicated for this how did you do it so i took it to three. for an, a month actually but uh, i started reading before i used to re- keep reading spot brown whenever i found time but i think the dedicated study was my plan was for one month it was just uh, i think uh, a stroke of luck for us that the exam got postponed so we got another three weeks to study and i think uh, i think that has made all the difference uh, because i had more time to revise everything so yeah i think i read spot brown i looked at uh, speed videos by dr teja and uh, did all the questions and all the books that he had suggested i think the major uh, trick to all these exams is always revision you've got to revise and revise and revise and re-revise that's the only way to pack these exams in my opinion because my memory is really bad so i need to revise at least three times before sitting for any exam to be able to at least think that i'm confident and, uh, enough to attempt any question uh I, maybe it works differently for others but for me i think i need three revisions before i sit for any exam yes very true your faculty is also from tata only yeah yeah i know he was my colleague <laughs> uh, so and everything is in tata revolving around you is uh, uh, in the tata and uh, and it is very good and it's quite inspiring that uh, i mean i have always seen the people who go want to do go to that place and stay there and achieve it also yeah. <laughs> and uh, very 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 nice uh, from your part what is the message that you want to give for the future aspirants of uh, students who want mch in oncology from an ent background i would say that i think uh, for people who do not have exposure to onco they should come and uh, work or maybe observe in places to get a better idea to be able to treat the patients better to have an understanding of onco and that is i think that's the only way you can understand whether you have any interest in onco or not because uh, still i feel that uh, a lot of the centers during the ms do not have that much exposure or they do not have uh, a multidisciplinary team to treat the onco cases i think that thing is something we will find only in onco centers and uh, head and neck onco is a super specialized branch i feel uh, it's a great opportunity and you really don't need to do any more fellowships after this like a general surgical oncologist would need to so it's a golden opportunity uh, for anybody who's actually interested in it so i feel if you if anybody has interest and does not have exposure it's good for them to go and observe in such institutes and decide for themselves if they really want to do this or not very good doctor now what is the time to thank and if you want to thank who have helped you to build your career till date you can thank them i think i would thank all my teachers till date right from school to uh, my mbbs to my masters and uh, to my current mentors at tata all of the teachers that i had and of course my parents who have been extremely supportive uh, my colleagues at tata who covered for me and my mentors at tata uh, hospital my guide in my ms dr hetan mathadya my mentors here at uh, tata hospital dr gauri panthadya dr ramesh deshmukh dr pratmesh sai they have been extremely extremely supportive i think they saw the spark in me and they have pushed me towards it and uh, i think they are probably uh, the people i would like to thank very very nice doctor great of you and we once again we wish you all the best and all the success and a great career in mch edenai oncology definitely so definitely the kind of focus and the passion you have for this uh, field uh, i think it will make wonders for you to deliver things for the patients all the best thank you so much thank you so much it's really nice talking to you thank you